Uh, my name is Omar Ndiaye. Uh, I'm 23 years old from Morgan State University. Um, and I'm a senior studying graphic journalism and multi TV production. Tia lead a label, pirate gain a team. I scream at all the time, y'all keep on asking what it mean. Pure freedom, boy, won't let them take control of me. That's why I read more, had to cut off the TV. Money. I was born in Washington, D.C. on January 28, 1988. Uh, I was the second to last child of, out of a family of eight children. Uh, two of my older sisters are, are, are in Africa. I never met them. Uh, they both names are Fatu and Ami. And my other older sister I have not met. She lives in Spain right now, um, taking care of my niece and nephew. And my other older brother, his name is uh, uh, he died at age three. I never had a chance to meet him, but most of the time, like I'm going through things, I thought them his spirits. I've been coming to people's houses, like when I was a kid, like seeing people with portraits of the family portrait. Like I just want to have one time and like have everybody in the family where everything is straight with their financial situation or any situation they have. I want to have like a family portrait. That's like. And my family dream, that's my family dream right there, is have a, a family portrait of everybody. Because if it's like that, I, I don't know. It'll be like very emotional and very memorable at the same time. Growing up, um, I was always smiling when I was a kid. I had pictures of me smiling and looking around. Uh, when I was uh, three years old, um, I was three years old in 1991. Uh, my teacher, I'm not going to say her name, uh, she attacked me when I was three. Uh, I was playing a little clapping game with a friend of mine. Uh, I remember her name was Brittany. Uh, Howard, I'm, the only way I remember her name because we have name plates. Um, we took our class for picture. Um, we were playing Miss Mary Mac. Then next to you know, my teacher came in. As you know, my teacher came in and uh, attacked me. She grabbed me by my back of my head and stunned my guess my face on the floor like three times. Uh, of course, I was crying. Uh, I lost two of my front teeth and I was bleeding from the nose and the mouth. And mostly blood came out of my mouth through my gums. And I have a little problem with my head. Sometimes I, sometimes I speak, I pause for a couple seconds. Sometimes I think out loud when I'm trying not to. Uh, when my parents came over and confronted me, my dad, he was, he was upset at the fact what happened, but he was telling me, what did I do? I'm like, I didn't do anything. She was attacking me. And um, my mom, she came over there and she was heated. Of course she was heated. She blew a gasket. She was about to fight my teacher. And of course the teacher got suspended, but my parents never sued her, like she got fired. As growing up as a little kid, uh, always being teased, not because my African culture or my name is by my skin tone, mostly it's my skin tone, uh, being dark skin. Uh, I'm being teased every day. Uh, every time I ask for teachers for my, for some support, sometimes they say, you help me. Most times they say ignore them. Sometimes I try to ignore them, but like a number of kids like like gang up on me, say some things mentally, physically, and they're not even joking around. They are serious. They are really serious about it. I don't know why, but that's that's who they are. And uh, so I try to tell my father about my father it completely ignores me. He said like, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about focus on the school, focus on the school. And like, but the school is is the problem. So why am I focused on something but I'm hearing people agging, nagging on me at the same time? So basically, has one in my concentration. I think people, people, when I was growing up, they judged me for, you know, some people were like, I don't even know, like in the train or the bus or even on the street, say something about me, which I don't know, I understand. Like, I don't know how you walk outside and say, I feel like insulting somebody, making fun of them. Like, this is how God created me. I never asked God, I was kid, like, I want to be dark skin. This is how I created, this is how I am. I can't, I have no control of it. And, uh, 
when I was growing up, of course, I got into so many fights. Basically, I tried to tell teachers my situation, but the teachers won't listen to me. So basically, I took it upon my own hands to not talk with my mouth. I'm not, I'm not talking to them. I'm not going to get physical with them. So basically, just to shut them up. So basically, I got in plenty of fights. I got detention. I got suspended once after a week for two days. Mostly got detention, but sometimes I won't come because I'm like, I feel it's right as a person. I'm not coming to these detentions because, like, the teacher heard what the kid said about me, but my 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 late grandmother, my grandfather, and then you get mad at me for telling me to ignore them. I'm like, that's when I draw a line. Like, yo, I'm not gonna ignore that. I'm just gonna tell the person by my fist, but like, don't talk about my family, don't basically me. If you don't know me, don't judge me. Period. What? There's more before? Thanks, right? Before I made Tyler experience, I made a cartoon called Sweat Party. Um, sweat Party is about four guys, Mo, Tyrone, Anthony, John. About those four guys going to a party. Uh, they got stuck in a log line. Then Mo, the lead character, left his ID. Got your ticket and student ID? Because I got mine. Got mine. Got mine. Got my ticket? But where's my ID? I swore I had it in my wallet after I... Oh, shoot. I left my student ID in the room. And it's funny to me because, like, when I put that in there, it, I basically have a mixture of, of my experience on the sweat party and my other friend's sweat party because like, I have a friend who actually actually left his ID in his room where everybody's waiting because basically like, if you're going to party, you gotta make sure everything's straight. You gotta have like, your, your money, of course, you gotta have your money. And you have you gotta, you gotta get your ID, got your ID, and make sure you don't have your phones just in case you get some numbers, you know what I'm saying? Because anything can happen on the party. So like, he was all there, we all prepared, and then he said, dog, yo, I'm left my ID, man. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm like, what? We came here from this long line. We in this line for like 20 minutes. We cut through the line struggling. And then all you all you saying that you left your ID, I'm like, yo, this is ridiculous. So you left your ID in the room? You better move like start a hedgehog or something. This part about be full in no time. Maybe I can get in with my license. Hey man, you better pray on it. And then like, I wrote it down. I'm like, yo, this is a good story to tell. I wrote it down and I put it in there. And I was fascinated with all the cartoons growing up. I like Rugrats, uh, Randy Stinky, uh, Rock of Modern Life, Doug, Doug, Recess, everything, Static Shock. And mostly the standout, the most point is Boondocks. Boondocks was like, the most truthful speaking cartoon I've seen in my life. It's, the thing about this, it tells the truth how, not just black people, but how we are, but exploit them in a funny way. So basically in the sweat party, I tell them about the situations we've gone through. They're like, yo, people always do that stuff. You know, that happened to me yesterday. That happened to me last year. Yo, that's crazy. And then like, when I put on the sweat party, uh, y'all, my friend Ryan, uh, he, Ryan, his name is Ryan Marshall, Ryan H. Marshall. He told me like, yo, you should put that in the TV in Morgan. So I put that in there, and then like I have put it on Facebook. I thought I'm like I'm gonna get like at least five comments, five comments at least. Put that in there. And people say, Yo, this is good. This is good. Okay, regular five comments, whatever. Then the next hour, four more comments came in. Like, Yo, this joint is funny. Yo, you should make a part two. I'm like, what? <laughs> and they put another cartoon in there, and like, oh wow, another another in cartoon. I see like eleven more comments. Like 11 comments, that's the most comments I ever got in my life. Mostly I get like happy birthday comments. Mm -hmm. So basically I put that, in, I see that in there. I'm like, this is nuts. He was like, make a part two, yo. This one half one, yo. This one is all true. I made part two. I actually doubled the comments they had on part one. And after that, part three. He said, make part three, make part three, yo. It's good. I made part three. That train was off the chain. I actually liked it. My professor, Dawson, he liked the show so much. Like, yo, you got to be a character. Royal Farm or bachelor's degree. I can get you $5 an hour or $55 an hour. Choice is yours. Choice is yours. Pick, 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 pick. Get your act together. You need to start focusing on passing my class instead of focusing on that ad. I'm just saying.
Then after that, I had a little poll on the tongue. I had a sweat party fan page after a poll in like his favorite character. He would say like Tyrone. So basically, like I won't put it in there. But at the same time, I had issues with some of the cast members because like some of them were not supported. They would be basically jealous of themselves. Like, yo, put me on, put me on. And I'd be so nice enough to say, I'll put you on. But at the same time, I tell them like, yo, promote it. You should be in the show too, promote it. You know what I'm saying? They don't do it. I'm like, you know what? I don't want to deal with these people like that. Like that. So basically, I took like a year higher. This is drawing. Next thing you know, I made time. I looked over the summer. I saw a guy create a show for him. Jay's Life. Jay's Life. Fast name. And I find out the guy who made Jay's Life would do the same thing I'm doing. He drew, did the voices, write, directed, edit all by himself. I like that. That's amazing. This guy is just like me. He doing the same thing that I'm doing. So that's kind of cool. Then, like, I start talking, and actually, no, I start making time on experience. Fist one, made out of rollies, chains with diamond cuts, wasn't none of them phony. Hella I did my little casting call and everything, and uh, it's funny, came out really funny, and actually reached over like 11,000 views. Actually make 10,000 views and other things, I was amazed by it, and then people saw, yo, I saw that joint on, on Facebook, I saw that joint on YouTube, that joint was mad funny, that joint was too by everything. And then, and I can exploit them. Like, it's crazy, it's a crazy thing. John Singleton, that was, that was a good inspiration. Like Spike Lee's, like Spike Lee, um, Aaron Brewer, and uh, James Cameron. Those are like good inspirations to make your films, and, and they're very creative. And, I'm like, I'm just fascinated. Like, yo, I want to make something just like this. I want to make something like this so I can capture people's attention because I, ha I have something that people never thought of and never put it out. And I'm kind of surprised they never done it. So that'd be kind of cool.